He's been called one of the most successful labor leaders of all time. He dropped out of school because his family was poor and in 1914 joined the Teamsters as a laundry truck driver. By the 1930s, he was one of the drivers of the union itself. By the time he stepped down as International Teamsters president in 1957, the Teamsters were the largest labor union in the world. Three U.S. presidents, Eisenhower, Truman, and Roosevelt, asked him to be their secretary of labor. He didn't want the job. Dave Beck was 62 when he retired as Teamsters president. Today, he's 89, a millionaire through real estate deals who prefers to live in a middle-class home at the north end of Lake Washington. It's been nearly 20 years since he left McNeil Island Penitentiary, where he served two and a half years for income tax fraud and for larceny from the sale of a union-owned car. Beck calls the prison term the best vacation he ever had. He insists he never took anything from the Teamsters. He doesn't carry nearly the weight he did in his heyday as a union boss, down 80 pounds from his top weight of two and a quarter. Besides some bursitis and a cataract, he's in very good physical shape. The fire still burns inside Dave Beck. As he raises his hand and his voice to make a point, his eyes light up, and you can see the labor boss of 30 years ago pounding the podium. I think the bargaining position of labor has been greatly weakened. But it's been weakened only because the profit picture has also been terrifically weakened in industry. Beck draws similarities between the plights of American business and American labor, both staggered by foreign competition. He says the two sides must recognize the rights of the other. But the welfare of labor is 100% cooperation wherever possible with industry, recognizing the rights of each of us, those selling its labor, and those selling the products of its labor. Does labor have very much to celebrate on this Labor Day 1983? Yes. They have a great deal to celebrate. The, the organized structure that they've got in existence right now all over the United States and Canada. Industries are in no better shape, in my opinion, right now than labor is and not as good. How do you account for the labor movement losing so much of its punch over the last five or ten years? Is it just the poor economy? I think it's the bad economy, 98% of it. And I hesitate to answer your question as to how I feel about it, because I don't think that the, the membership is as militant and the leadership is not as militant as it was in the days uh, when I was associated with it. Beck but says unions must continue to organize members as well as the tremendous purchasing power of those members. Now organize that purchasing power so that as a union member you will, pat, you will spend your money in the avenues that employ union labor and you're 90% of the way home. Buy America until we're in shape that you can afford to, to compete all around the world. Now we've got to take the position until our own people are back to work, people eligible to citizenship in our country, black and white, are back to work. We are not buying outside the United States. Beck emphatically says the future of labor unions is... Good. Definitely so. He says you some businesses have taken advantage of labor's of situation to gain one-sided contract settlements, but he believes economic recovery will bring recovery for unions. There are those who would say that the day of the union is gone. Those are people that's had no experience over the years with labor industry. We have always had to fight to live. But the minute that labor's working back together and, and, uh, and industry don't have the advantage that they have now, where you can't get jobs for your membership, labor will come back. Today marks the 101st Labor Day. Does Dave Beck think it's appropriate that he's nearly as old as Labor Day itself? No, it should have been organized long before it was. Mark Rahlstad reporting for Channel 7 Close Up.